Hi, it's Helen. Hey, I want to talk a little bit about adhesives. And I'm not going to do a demo. I'm just going to show you the types of adhesives that I like to work with paper. And this is not all inclusive. These are what I use, but I know there are other kinds as well. So let's start with tape. There are all kinds of tape, but I like to use artist tape for um, sticking things down when I'm working on them. It's fairly removable. And um, painter's tape, I use that a lot too, that blue tape. Because I'm a hand paper maker, I use strapping tape when I need to tape a piece of equipment or put something on my mold and decal. Um, it's waterproof. And then I use double-sided tape a lot. It doesn't warp and wiggle, which glue does sometimes. And I just wanted to show you, you can get it in all kinds of thicknesses. This is one eighth, this is one quarter, and it comes archival. Um, scotch, I don't believe is archival, and um, but it's easy to use because it's on the dispenser and it comes permanent and adjustable, I believe. There's also washi tape, which comes in hundreds of varieties. It's actually a paper tape. There are knockoffs that are not paper, um, but it's a Japanese product and it's pretty. So it can be used. It's not terribly sticky. It's, it's not used to tape things together, but more for decoration. It comes in all kinds of different widths too. And then glues. So these are some of the glues I use. In paper making, I use methyl cellulose. Um, for actually connecting wet sheets of paper. It's not terribly strong for that application, but it does help. And paper pulp uh, naturally sticks to itself as well. In book binding, it's a great adhesive to mix with PVA, which is polyvinyl acetate. This is also archival, both of these are. And PVA dries fast, so if you need to slow down the drying time, you can add methyl cellulose. It comes in powder form, and you do have to mix it up to make it uh, a liquid for, for using it. I wanted to show you this glue applicator that I love. I get it from the lamp shop online, and I'll put a list of resources underneath this video too, so you can find out where I get all these things. Um, it's got a really fine point so that you can squirt a, a bead of it nicely and it is refillable, which is awesome. If I don't use this and I'm using a brush, I'll use these little condiment containers that I get in packs of 50 and, um, they have lids. I use these for teaching a lot so you can, everyone can just get a little bit of, uh, PVA. Um, I would say PVA is the glue I use the most. And then there are rice starches and wheat pastes. These also come in powder form. You have to cook these and mix them up. And they are great for working with Japanese papers, thinner papers, for adhering larger areas, so really spreading out. They dry slower as well compared to the PVA. And they're used in book binding quite a bit. And then this is a rice a rice paste that comes already made up. So you don't have to mix it up or cook it. And then I just want to show you several brushes. I don't really use fancy brushes. This is my fanciest, although it's really beaten up. It's got a lot of stain on it. This is a Japanese brush with uh, animal hair bristles. And it's wonderful. I use foam brushes a lot. And then just different widths of bristle brushes. This is just from the hardware store, and these are from the art supply store. Um, depending on what I'm gluing, I choose the bristle width. I also use a uh, glue stick often when I don't need a strong bond. So um, this is a Japanese glue stick, and Yuhu is an archival glue stick. Have fun sticking things together.